In today's video, we are going to be talking about the types of events we are going to be meeting in the world of probability. And uh, in no particular order, we have what we call the impossible events, the sure events, the simple events, the compound events. We have the mutually exclusive events, the mutually inclusive events, the dependent events, and independent events. So let's kick start this by trying to define what an impossible event is. So an event is said to be impossible if there's a certainty that the event is not going to happen. That is, it is impossible that this event of ours is going to happen. For an impossible event, the probabilistic value attached to such event is actually equals to zero. And contrary to the concept of the impossible event, we have the sure event. And uh, an event is said to be a sure event is if the probabilistic value is actually equals to 1 or 100%. That is, we are definitely sure or we are definitely certain that this event of ours is actually going to occur. The next type of event we are talking about is the concept of the simple event. And uh, an event is said to be simple if it consists of just one outcome. To explain this concept, I'll be using the example of the experiment of a football match. So the sample space of a football match is actually equals to win, loss, or draw. So if I decide to be interested in just the event of win, I have a simple event or I'm interested in loss. I also have a simple event or I'm interested in draw. That is also a simple event. And contrary to the concept of simple event, we have the compound event. And uh, an event is said to be compound if it consists of more than one outcome still going back to the experiment of a football match uh, the outcome is still win loss or draw so if i decide to pick like two events let's say i decide to pick a uh, win and loss that is a compound event or i decide to pick a uh, win and draw that is also a compound event or i decide to pick win loss and draw that is a compound event because i have more than two outcome in the sample space so it's time for us to talk about the four most important type of events we are going to be coming across in the world of probability and that is the mutually exclusive events, the mutually inclusive events, the dependent events and the independent events. So I am going to be kickstarting with the concept of the mutually exclusive and the mutually inclusive events. So two events are said to be mutually exclusive if they cannot occur simultaneously, that is they cannot occur at the same time. And two events are said to be mutually inclusive if they can occur simultaneously, that is, they can occur at the same time. So to explain the concept of mutually exclusive and uh, inclusive events, I'll be using like few examples. So let's start with uh, the experiment of flipping a coin just once. So if I'm supposed to flip a coin just once, the outcome of this experiment is supposed to be head and tail. Now when you flip a coin once, you either have head or tail. You can't tell me that you flipped your coin once and you are having head and tail at the same time. That is never possible because it's either you have head or you have tail. You can never have head and tail. Such event that is flipping a coin just once is actually a mutually exclusive event. Another example is when we decide to roll a fair die just once. So it's either we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five or we have six. You can't tell me that you roll a die just once and two and five showed up at the same time. That is never possible. You either have two or five showing up. So that is also a typical example of a mutually exclusive event. Now let's talk about the example that helps us to understand the concept of mutually inclusive events. So to explain the concept of the mutually inclusive event, I'll be using the example of rolling a fair die just once to explain the concept of mutually inclusive event. So let's assume I decide to roll my fair die just once and uh, I am interested in the probability of obtaining a prime number and an odd number at the same time. So we can see that inside the sample space of rolling a fair die just one, we have a number that can actually serve as a prime number. And at the same time, it actually serves as an odd number. And those numbers are 3 and 5. 3 is an odd number. 5 is an odd number. 3 is a prime number. 5 is a prime number. So definitely, it is possible that when we decide to roll a fair die just once, it is possible for us to have a prime number. And it is also possible for us to have an odd number. We can see that both events of having an odd number and a prime number can actually coexist within the same experiment. Hence, we can say that having a prime number and an odd number in this experiment of ours is actually a mutually 
inclusive events. If you take a closer look, you will realize that the concept of mutually inclusive events and a mutually exclusive events is actually us trying to interact two events within the same experiment. We also need to realize that the concept of mutually exclusive and mutually inclusive events are best expressed uh, with the concept of Venn diagram and set theory. In fact, uh, the mutually exclusive events are also known as disjoint events. And uh, if you are talking about the mutually exclusive events, uh, we can use set A to represent one of the events and we use set B to represent another event. And this is what the Venn diagram looks like. And as you can see, there is actually no interaction or there is no common region between set A and set B, meaning that there is no interaction between both uh, events. And for a mutually inclusive event, we can see that there is actually an intersection between both sets, which simply tells us that for a mutually inclusive event, both events can occur simultaneously. Let's talk about the concept of dependent and independent events. And I am going to be starting with the concept of dependent events. So two events are said to be dependent on each other if the occurrence of one of the events is going to be affecting the occurrence of the other. And uh, two events are said to be independent events if the occurrence of one of the events does not affect the other. I would be using a simple example of a bag containing seven red balls and uh, three blue balls to explain the concept of dependent and independent events. So let's assume I have a bag, it contains seven red balls and it also contains three blue balls and I decide to pick two balls at random. So I have a first pick which represents one event and then I have another pick which represents another event. If I pick the first ball and uh, I did not replace this ball back into the bag, it is going to reduce the total number of balls I have in the bag because at the start of the experiment I have 10 balls and now that I made my first pick I'm going to be having 9 balls left so definitely by the second pick the probability of picking the second ball is going to reduce based on the fact that the number of balls has reduced so when we perform experiments of this nature and we do so without replacement the probability of the first event happening is actually going to affect the probability of the second event happening making us have what we call a dependent event and for an independent event we are performing the experiment but we are doing so with replacement so that means that after performing the first event of picking one ball we actually return this ball back into the bag and makes the number of ball constant remains the same all through so that means that the probability of picking a second ball is not affected by the probability in which we use in picking the first ball. So this is the concept of independent events. So in the next series of video, we are going to be talking about the mathematics we use to define each of those types of events. I'm talking about the mutually exclusive, the mutually inclusive, the dependent and the independent events. If you learned something new and you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on your notifications to get notified when I release a new video, which I do at least you know two times in a week thanks for making it to the end of this video and we we'll see you in the next one bye for now